There we go. Okay, good afternoon and welcome. Um, this is my daily broadcast and uh, wait for a few, pe few people say they might show up. We'll see what happens. Um, but if you're joining me for the first time, you're watching the replay, let me introduce myself and that'll help you get an understanding of where I'm coming from, what I'm about and why I do these daily Facebook Lives, 319 of them so far. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women, try that again, I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And these talks are called Messages from, the, Messages from Masculine to inspire the feminine heart. I'm getting tripped up today. I'll see if I can get more smooth as I go forward. And today's topic um, being number 319, by the way, in my daily ongoing series of talks. I'll get to, I'll tell you a little bit later where you can find those broadcasts. Um, and I'm calling this the victory of being single, learning to love yourself. And what inspired this topic, I should say what brought this to mind more currently is because last night I was co-facilitating an amazing workshop, wonderful workshop that I had um, the joy of co-facilitating with my friend Alana Zab Zabel, Zabel, I don't need to know how to pronounce your last name, oops, um, at her uh, yoga studio in Brentwood. And so if you want to find out more about that, message me. We'll be doing it again, actually we'll do the next part, it's a five-part series, and we'll be doing that one in uh, May 20th will be the next one, doing once a month for five months through August. So that'll be, that'll be on conscious communication, which is going to be a really interesting conversation. But the last night's one was about organic love and organic romance organic romance. And so one of the threads that came up in the conversation, as in one of the common threads that came up in the conversation, was the journey to being happily single. And I'm calling it being victoriously single in a way, because for some people being single sucks big time. Like people who are um and I'll say it's a nice way. <laughs> I'm going to be careful about this. I could get really in trouble with this. I'm aware that there are people who think that being single is a losing place to be. In fact, they look at singles as being losers, and if they're, they're single, they think they're a loser. So they're passionate about getting back into a relationship again. I would say that's the exact opposite way of approaching relationship. Because the way they're driven is thinking that the only way they're going to be happy, the only way they're going to be fulfilled, the only way they're going to be um, successful is if they're in a relationship. And it doesn't really matter what relationship it is in the sense of the quality or the communication or the connection. And that is a very poor approach to relationships. You know, just to be with another warm body because you think that's the way to be happy is an errant approach. And so I'm going to speak to the benefits of being single and the journey to self-love because this may just change your life. Ooh, nothing major, of course, just minor stuff like that. So from last night's um, conversation with the audience, this this thematic about, um, in one case, and I'll start with this one because it's what was more prevalent, about the feeling about never finding true love and the feeling that is there a chance of me making, finding love again? Now, let me quickly leave context. The majority of the people in the audience were in their 40s. Um, I should take it back, I think one, one or two were in the 50s, which is the first half of life. If you want to talk about longevity... So the idea about having no chance of meeting somebody later in life because you didn't do it in the first 30, 40 years of your life is really a, a limited way of looking at things. And as I'm in that, actually a little bit higher than that number and have, I'm single, have been single for 11 years, I can speak to myself about this one because I'm totally clear that I'm not afraid of that. In fact, I'm very clear that I'm going to be in an amazing relationship at the right time because I've been doing the work on being single first. So I want to show you some, share some things I've been through personal experience and things I've been learning through teachers I've studied with and what I've been sharing with my clients because this may just help you, one, be successful in being single and two, be in the right energetic because this is what I'm going to give you the big secret later on of how to attract an amazing relationship. Sounds good? I hope so because I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> and of course, if you're not interested in watching, you'll have signed up by now. So, um, so thank you for staying online and watching because now we're going to get into the good stuff. There's a paradigm or a way of talking that has for a long time um, have people think that 
Oop, I don't know something. Hang on a second. If I fix this whilst I'm on the on the call, so I'm going to see if I can do this. No, uh, let me do if I can do that. Can I do this? It doesn't look like I can. Oh well. I thought I could do. Um, I forgot to do do not disturb. So basically, on this broadcast, I may get interrupted. Hopefully not. But I forgot to do that before I started. So bear with me. Trust that it'll be quiet. My phone will be quiet for the next uh, few minutes, so I can finish this talk. All right. Getting to the topic. There is a paradigm or there is a, an assumption that's prevalent in society that you're not really a whole person to your in a relationship, which is really interesting thing. Because there's two, let me, let me back up a second. There's a paradigm that you'll only be whole in your relationship. At the same time, that being in a relationship is where you find your other half. Both of those imply that in a human relationship, you're not complete and not whole. That's, I'm calling bullshit on that, to be blunt. In fact, because a lot of people feel well, let's speak to this part. A lot of suicides come from people who feel depressed. And a lot of depression comes from the fear of being single and that by being single, they're not going to be in love. And therefore, they're unloved, therefore depressed, and therefore, they don't choose to be here. That's one of the things that happens. So that, that's, there's an extreme, there's an extreme um, bottom to this pit, as it were, of people who don't feel comfortable being single. So I want to make something very clear. To be confidently comfortable and clear when you're single is a victory. Because the downside can be very challenging, as I mentioned. And in many cases, and in fact, this was shared last night by a couple of people, being single is actually a much healthier place than the relationships they were in before that. And you may have the same experience. I know a couple of times I did in my life, looking back at relationships I was in, I was far better off being single than I was in that relationship. So... Being in love for no reason, I should say being in a relationship to avoid being single is no reason to choose that. And the, the words came out wrong initially, but I think you got the point of that. So, I think I've made the point that being single is good. Let's talk about the self-love piece. This is also, also in the title of this broadcast. For, lo for a lot of us, because I had the same feeling myself, I had this belief that love came from somebody else, not from myself. Or just say, love came to me from somebody else. It didn't come to me from myself because I only had my love for somebody else. The wiring was, which we're all taught, as most of us are taught as we were raised, that we, we bring love to other people. We don't have love for ourselves except what we receive from other people, which is where the whole codependent 50-50 relationship model became reality, which is a false reality, by the way. In fact, one of your biggest gifts, strengths, options you can do to feel whole and to be happily single and to be more attractive to a future partner yes it works that way too is to learn to love yourself consider this if you're at the world and you meet someone of the opposite sex or the gender you're attracted to and you see two people side by side and one of them is really looking for love and hungry for love and not feeling love for themselves and they want to find a partner and they're looking at you for that and the other person is comfortable in their skin. They love who they are. They're comfortable being single. And they're interested in you. Now, for some of you, you want to go with, part, with choice A, which is the one where you want someone who's codependent and is hungry for you because you want to be able to say they're, they're dependent upon me and I can make sure they never leave. And for some of you, that's a choice I wouldn't recommend making. So let's drop that one, shall we? The other choice, which is to be a two... Um, pursued, depends if you're a man or a woman, because of the quality for this. The one you're most attracted to, ideally, is the one who is already loving themselves. Because self love is actually a very attractive quality. Ooh, that's a big secret. Now you know. Being in love with yourself, and I don't mean this as an ego position, by the way, because some people think, oh, they're so full of themselves. That's ego, that's not love. Self love is honoring who you are, self love is respecting who you are. Self-love is taking care of yourself because you deserve it, not for any other reason. Not because of what you do, not because of who you are, not because of where you live. You love yourself and take care of yourself because you are deserving of that. Pure and simple. That may take all the pressure off, I hope. So, self-love as a vehicle to... Be full of who you are, in a healthy way, by the way. 
Again, this is not ego-based. This is about self-love, self-support, heart-centered response, not a head-centric um, ego boost. Because there are people out there who act very confident, but it's all up here. And it's, sometimes it's actually sickening to be really transparent with that. I've seen plenty of people out there who seem to be like they're so full of themselves. It's like it's not from love. It's from ego. And it's almost like a place where they're actually a hollow shell. There's nothing inside because they're trying to convince you that they're okay. And that isn't healthy. So self-love as an internal process that restores yourself to yourself, especially if you've been wounded in past relationships, by the way. And that's a big piece as well, by the way, because last night in the, in the workshop I was teaching, I was co-facilitating, we talked about that wounding from past relationships. And the healing work is self-love, which can, can, can come in the form of, of forgiveness, of, in a way, appreciating who you are. It can also come from the place of grief where you're actually letting go of past wounds and loss and the loving that you do through that process puts you back in touch with who you are. Self-love is big. Self-love is important. And self-love is free. You don't require to sign up for anything, do anything. You simply can do it for yourself. I'll give you a homework assignment at the end that will actually help you with that. My gift to you. Um, so I think I've given you both parts about being single is healthy. In fact, I would recommend before you get into any relationship, if you're single right now, your focus I say should, but I recommend your focus be about how to be happy in who you are, how to be whole with who you are, and how to be comfortable so you don't need anybody else, because that makes you more attractive. That neediness is an unattractive quality, by the way. So learning to truly honor, respect, and love yourself, again, self-love, self-confidence, and self-support are the way that make you, one, more attractive for a relationship, but two, make you more whole so you don't need someone to make you feel better. And that, my friends, is how to break out of the codependent cycle. It's also how to be more comfortable in who you are in your skin and how it makes you more attractive to a future partner. That's a threefer. <laughs> I hope this has been of value to you, by the way. This is, this is a quick dab into the topics I talk about a lot in my coaching and a lot in my book and a lot in my work. This is one of those big pieces of the puzzle that I've talked about before in different ways, but I want to give it to you this way because it might be of value to you. Perhaps you didn't read this, watch this before this way. Speaking of which, first of all, um, if you're stuck in this area where you are single or not in a relationship that's not working and you want to get some help, I do offer this every, every time I do my broadcast now, which is my complimentary clarity conversation, which you can get for free as a gift from me to you by going to my website and clicking on barryselby.com, which is my website. Click on the Let's Chat button and you can get this conversation with me for that. Second thing is all my broadcasts are on my website as well as being on my YouTube channel and on my business page on Facebook. And it's all 300, and this one will be 319, so a lot of these are out there. Um, and quickly re recap, so my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Message from the Masculine. My business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. And again, my website is barryselby.com. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. And if you want help in this area, I do invite you to sign up for that discovery session, that complimentary clarity conversation. And if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. Homework. If self-love is something you're working on and you want to do more of this, this is what I recommend you do. And if you've never done it before, this will make it an easy um, entry into this process. And I've said this before, so I'm going to say it again. It doesn't take much. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, looking in the mirror, saying from your eyes to yourself in the mirror, seeing yourself, hearing yourself, feeling yourself, and say, I love you to yourself in the mirror. Do that for five minutes, as in connect heart to heart with you in the mirror. Yes, you can do this and say I love you to yourself for five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. Do this for 30 days, it will change your life, and your life will be miraculous. You're welcome. With that, I say thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow with 300 and, number 320. Um, and thank you for being with me. And I do appreciate you taking this to heart. This is of use to you, as my gift to you. All right? Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.